it might only be November, but this is a pretty season-defining episode. We're four points off the top, and today we face the surprise leaders. But then, the crucial one, at home to Astana. If we win it, and Arsenal do their job against Fiorentina, we're in the Europa League last 32. Let's go and see if it happens. <laughs> Yes, hello and welcome along to part 33 of Rebuilding Viborg with me, Daniel. It's the second stint of our Scandinavian rebuild and we are back with Viborg, back in the title race, back in form, back amongst the goals and with two very big games. Today we head to the aptly named Right to Dream Park to face Norgeland who are flying after a poor year last year. But then Astana is the one we're keeping our eyes on. It's a huge game for us. And after an international break, it's going to be a test with three games in a space of seven days. We've also had our latest cup draw, which will form part of the next episode. You can see Bromby, either tie sandwich by the Arsenal game. And then the winter break with the January window, sure to provide some fireworks. Sampaio won't sign a new deal. How on earth are we going to get around that? If you're looking forward to finding out the answer to all of those questions over the next few days, then please do put a thumbs up on the video and subscribe for daily FM videos. We of course had our new series start at the beginning of this week. You can find that up in the eye above as well as all the other key playlists and Twitch channel and then links to ways to support the channel and of course to other platforms down in the description below. But thank you for watching as always as we reflect on a pretty positive spell for the club. We've started to bounce back. We've started to play well. And I know it's only been two games off camera, but added to what we had against Copenhagen and Fiorentina in the last video, I'm really pleased with the progress we're making. Because we battered Bromby in the game afterwards, despite a rotated side in areas. 4-1 victory with Sampaio and Harbo both getting braces. And it might be one of Sampaio's last games for us, because we may be forced to sell, as we did last year with Thorson. Moving down, we won 7-2 in the cup. We raced into a seven-goal lead in 50 minutes and then unfortunately just took our foot off the gas a bit. We did bring on some youth players though, so you can understand why that happened. Jurchin Rothman's hat-trick, the star event of that game. So today we face Norgeland and Astana. We then get through Silkeborg and the first leg of Bromby and we will be taking trips to Arsenal and Bromby in the next episode too. But let's go and get into the first of today's games and via some contractual news that is rather scary. Because if we have a look at where we are at the moment, we have got a brilliant striker in Flavio Sampaio who is out of contract next summer. And when you consider the fact that he's still unhappy, he still wants to move, we could have a problem. Because if he doesn't sign a deal next month, he is going to be able to leave for free. And with clubs wanting him for sort of two and a half million, I feel like I have to let him go. So if the situation doesn't change, we're going to offer him out in December. Um, we'll just try and beat the rush, get him out before he can go for free. But with him going, with Palmer out next summer, you would imagine he won't be loaned here again by Copenhagen. We are going to be a little bit short in some crucial areas. So that's something to keep an eye on. But for now... It's all about enjoying his last games with us. We've got a trip to Norgeland as Mitchelland, who have started to fall away, head to Lingby. And no action till tomorrow night for Copenhagen. But they've got a banker on paper at home. So let's go through the tactical meeting. Let's see who's fit after a big international break. And fingers crossed we will get some positive news as we go away to the league leaders. So I've just seen Norgeland star success this season. They've got a young striker on loan from City worth £50 million. Not the best finisher, but everything else is bordering on world class. For us, we've got a couple of problems after the internationals and Yembi is struggling. So Oscar Burr is in at right back and we've also had to drop Wynn throughout the squads. He might not have made it anyway. But this is the 11 that we're going for in full. We've got Lurche in goal, a man with a release clause. Got to be careful with him too this winter. Burr and Real the fullbacks with Messick and Carter centre half. Vic Canel and Harbo the midfield three. The usual trusted front three of Sampaio, Beck and Palmer. But how many more games am I going to say that for? Let's go and enjoy this one while we can and hope we can get within one point at the top of the table tonight. And here we go, Kent Nielsen's side led by the star Loney, Jake Roberts up front, even pushed Banzer out the team who scored against us a few times. They've got a very good side, they've recruited really well, they had a tough season after losing their manager to Copenhagen, 
but now they're both really good sides. And a bit like us last year, we mentioned it in the last episode, they're playing one game a week, while us, Bromby, Mitchelland and Copenhagen are all playing group stage football every Thursday. So they are having the benefit of a week's rest, but it's another matter taking it. And to be fair to them, they are. So into the first half we go, we're expecting a tough game, but let's see if we can come out on top and get right back in the midst of this title race. As we're back just a couple of minutes in, the Norgeland keeper has possession, doing a darting run across his area for some reason. Roberts flicks his on, but Burr wins it, and he finds Palmer. Through ball towards Sampaio. Holds the ball up well, finds Cannell. He's got options left of him, Beck is one of them. He's cutting in, finds a great through ball for David Palmer. Oh, why is he trying to dink from there? That is one of the most atrocious finishes I've ever seen in the match engine. Tries to dink the keeper who was on his line, then sort of scoops it sideways and it doesn't even go out of play. Absolutely baffling that finish, but regardless, it's nil-nil. We've had the better of the stats, but again, we're not taking our chances, which might be the issue later on. Well, five minutes to the break. We've got an injury warning for Sampaio. Is he just trying to get himself out earlier? It's only a bruised ankle. He should be all right. As Beck holds the ball up, I've got to think about Thursday. Astana is such a big game for this club financially. And we have got good strikers on the bench. Rothman scored a hat-trick last game. Park's a good young player. Do I risk Sampaio beyond half-time? I think probably not is the answer. As Lasmi picks it up on the right to Devlin. Might get even worse if we go behind. But Messick intercepts. And Carter can bring it away. Out wide to Erasmussen and Palmer. Back to Rasmussen again. No idea why his name keeps changing in the match commentary. To Carter. Into Canel. Good football. Back to Vitt, through ball towards Sampaio. He's not going to get on that, though. Vitt does win it back, atones for his error. Beck plays through, Sampaio's in. Now he can come off. He's done his job. He scored the goal, and it's 1-0. And do you know what? Because we're now leading, I'm going to bring on Kasper Novicki. Chance for the youngster to really shine. It's 1-0. Sampaio scores whilst injured. And just a couple of minutes later, we're back with a free kick in a really dangerous position for Canel. He can curl this round the wall, you know. Good goalkeeping from Gulstorf. Wasn't sure about the wall he set up, but he got away with it as he clears long downfield. Rio wins the header for Beck. Can we get the second while we're in the ascendancy? So through ball to Novicki. He's in one on one. Just wide of the post. He's got great potential and he makes some lovely runs, but he's not quite there yet. And he's missed a few good chances this year as Devlin gives it to Paulson. Schlotterbeck up into midfield. Yildiz holds it up for Roberts. The star man's in. Lurche's been rounded. And you know what? He's not covered himself in glory this year. Alexander Lurche has been poor. And he's cost us another goal there. In a game we've been dominant. And in a 10 minute spell we've been utterly rampant. We've somehow gone in level at the break. And Norgeland will be absolutely thrilled. So let's get through the dressing room. Let's tell the lads to keep it up. I'm not sure I'm particularly confident now, despite the lads being inspired and motivated. Okay, the hour mark has been reached. We've got a struggle with David Palmer on the right wing. We've only got two subs breaks left, which I've got to remember. I'm going to bring on Rothman for Palmer. And I'm going to put Navicki on the right and Rothman up front. And then we'll make the last three subs in about 10 minutes. And there we'll probably focus on fatigue with midweek in mind. It's a goal kick for Gulstorf again. Norgeland going long. They've been direct all match here, to be honest. Novicki loses out there from Carter's clearance. And Roberts turns his man easily. Good challenge from Burr. Cannell gets it to Harbo, who just punts it away. They're happy to get rid of the danger at the moment. And Silva plays it back into midfield. It is a little bit of relentless pressure from our host for the first time in this match. As Lasmi gets down the right to the byline. Chance to cross to the back post. Bradal's up. I don't know what Lurch is doing. Carter loses a header. And how we're losing this game, I will never know. The chances we've conceded are silly. And with 20 remaining, we've been completely dominant. And we're losing 2-1 and we've got another injury. Vit, the holding midfielder, is going to have to come off. I'm going to bring on Carlson for him. Harbo's going to come off for Williamson. And then I've got to look at either Beck or one of the centre-halves. They've all been awful. I want to get Park on, really, but I don't know what benefit it has for us. Let's get the fresh legs up front. Beck off. Rothman on the left. Kim Park through the middle. Fingers crossed we nick a goal from somewhere, as it's Lurche's goal kick. Last highlight before the changes. Rothman loses out to Schlotterbeck. Roberts gets it down for Gnore. Through ball from Badal to Roberts. They could be out of sight here. Roberts forced wide. There's three in the middle. 
Good block by the defender. I don't think we're going to get anything. This has been an issue at parts this season. Just as it looked like we were getting back to winning ways. Just as it looked like we were finding form. We've thrown it away again. We're going to go attacking. We're going to encourage the boys. There's five minutes left. The morale is shot. But can we create that one more chance? To be honest, it's been an issue with goals all season. The main front three and Rothman have scored a few as we're conceding another chance there. But Naviki and Park just haven't got going despite their very good stats. Messick heads away, is picked up in the holding role. Gnore picks it again. Goes back to his centre half. They're happy in possession and it leads to nothing. But four minutes of stoppage time, we're creating no chances. And Norgeland have cemented their spot at the top. If Copenhagen win tomorrow, we're in big trouble. We'll be back on Thursday night to find out if they have and try and secure our European dream to paper over the cracks of what we've seen tonight. Back for match day then. It is Astana time and a chance at history. If Arsenal win against Fiorentina and we beat Astana, we are through to the Europa League last 32. Regardless though, and most importantly, if we stop Astana winning today, we're in Europe after Christmas, in the Europa Conference at least. So both ways, it's a great success. We would expect Fiorentina to beat Astana next time out, so we know this game is really the crucial one, and we're unlikely to get a result at the Emirates. But let's go straight into it, without Benjamin Vitt, who went off injured in the last game. Sampaio is back, but we're not in great shape. Copenhagen did win, so we're now five and seven points off the two teams at the top, and we're basically another point off on goal difference too. So domestically, things aren't looking perfect. But this is our chance to redeem ourselves. Kalamo Dauda is playing for Astana. Actually got some good players. Harris Seferovic is up front as well. Uh, Renato Stefan, good player, used to be at Wolfsburg back in the day. Thomas Callas, centre-half. There are a lot of familiar names in this Astana side. It didn't stop us beating them last time. Let's hope it doesn't stop us tonight either. We're going to make one change to the squad. Carlson will come in for Vit in the holding role. And on the bench, we're going to bring on Tumash Jakobsen as an extra midfielder. And we're going to bring Anyembi back in for Burr. And Burr on the bench for Morton Berens. There is our squad. It's as strong as we can be. Anyembi back in to make us stronger. Carlsen a slight weakness in midfield. But it's a good 11. It should be Astana. And hopefully other results go our way. Let's get through to the game and find out. Well, two changes for both us and Astana as it happens going into this one. They have got a really good front line in fairness and some decent defensive players too. They just didn't turn out last time out and we had it against Legia Warsaw, didn't we, in the first qualifier this year. We've had a real mixed bag of opponents turning up on top of their game and some just being absolutely atrocious. So let's get into the first half. We've got a good team out. We've got the back in of a near full house yet again. Let's try and deliver. Sampaio, leave us with a parting gift, please. As we're back in the fourth minute with Lung's goal kick. Long downfield. Nobody gets there, so Messick mops up and finds Anyembi. He should be pretty well rested as he gives it to Palmer and Harbo. Really waiting for Harbo season to ignite here. Playing in the same tactical role, but just not got going as Real delivers the cross, which is blocked by the first man. Back to Luca Canell. Has support inside of him. Lays off to Beck. And it's back to him again. Up to Harbo. Through to Sampaio. Good finish. He might be offside. I'm not confident enough to say he's okay that time. So let's just see what VAR says. It could be a perfect gift. It is a perfect gift. No, it's not. They fooled me. The referee didn't do his signal to say it's offside. But then it's disallowed. We've been caught out by that one before. It stays goalless as Callas has it at the back to Odalda. Concedes possession to Anyembi and Carter. Can we find a breakthrough here? We've looked good early doors again. We've always raised our game for the European night so far this season. As Palmer picks the ball up to Sampaio. He's onside this time. Oh, and he puts it wide. It's a glorious opportunity that goes begging. And it stays goalless. But we should be two up. Unfortunately, we're not taking big opportunities as Lurche in goal has possession. Carries it forward, goes long towards Sampaio. Good header away from Duarte as far as Beck. Real picks it up on the left-hand side. Carries it over halfway. He goes all the way towards the byline. There's three in the middle if he can cross. One of them's David Palmer. And he always scores this season in Europe. He's been absolutely phenomenal. Great assist from the left-back. Good finish from Palmer. And finally, we have the much-needed lead. Fiorentina, though, no! 2-0 up against Arsenal. It's a disaster for us. 
We guarantee third and almost certainly lose second. We're one point ahead of Fiorentina, but they play Astana next. And now we've got an injury to Parma. This is turning into a disastrous night. Now Vicky will come on on the right wing. Let's get through to half time. Or maybe not, as it's a long goal kick just a minute later for the visitors. Downfield towards Seferovic, and he's headed away to the sub Naviki. He's got space to run into. He's going alone. Nods it through to Sampaio. He's missed another one. He's having a really poor night, is the star striker. It might be a day for Jurchin Rothman off the bench. We need an Arsenal comeback. We need to get this game wrapped up. It's 1-0 at the break. We've been the better side. We said that against Norgeland, didn't we? Let's tell the lads to prove a point. And try and do the same in the second half. As we're back with an Anyembi throw in just a few minutes later. Naviki flicks it on but it doesn't reach its destination. And Anyembi will pick it up on the right again. Finds Carter. Into Anyembi. It's good football but we're not really showing great options here. Carlson on the right hand side goes back to Carter. We're waiting patiently for the opportunity as Canell. Inside to Harbo. Support again from Canell. Through ball's intercepted but it falls for Tobias Beck. Two or three up with him. His switch of play is poor. And Stefan heads away as far as Carter to Anyembi. Support down the right. Anyembi will go alone. This is how the first goal came about the other way. And Callas almost puts it in his own net. The keeper stops it on the line and just hoofs it clear. Oh, it's got to be more than one this. We cannot afford to drop points and fall behind as Lung plays out from the back to Callas. Long ball down the right, which Rio intercepts. He's had a good game there. Bought down, that's a second yellow. Game over now because it's a red card. We're a goal up. We're a man up and we're going to make some changes. Let's get the corner out of the way first as Canell puts it in. Back post is headed away. Carlson will bring it down. He's got time in possession. Out on the left-hand side is Canell who took the corner. Beats his man. Can he get the cross in? He does. Naviki's up. Can't win it. Goes out to Anyembi on the right. He gets to the byline too. Inside to Naviki. Back out to Anyembi. Crosses in. Headed away. It's a barrage of attacks. Constant pressure on the box. Real again. He delivered the golden cross last time. Back to Luca Canell. His cross is in. Naviki's up. Heads over the bar. How many more are we going to miss? I'm going to take off the centre forward. Give Jurchin Rothman a run. And hopefully we find a goal from somewhere soon. Because this could be a painful night. We're just over 20 on the clock. Canell's put a free kick into Rothman. Back to Naviki. Blocked by the keeper somehow. Brilliant save. And it's out for another corner kick. How has Naviki not scored in this match? It's Canell with the corner again. Carter at the back post. Naviki puts it in. I think he might be offside. I think he drifted past the keeper there. I want to take Harbo off in a minute because he is struggling with fatigue. But let's see if this counts. It does. Naviki gets his goal in Europe. Harbo will be replaced by Thomas Jakobsen. We're 20 to go. That should be game over. Now, can Arsenal stage a mighty comeback? Well, we're back with a free kick on the edge of the box as our expected goals has actually passed three and a half. And now our actual goals has become three. Luca Canell puts a brilliant one in the top corner. Fabulous strike from the centre mid. And it's 3-0. It's completely deserved on the balance of play. Arsenal are two down still. It's not going to be enough. But to wrap up third place as we head into stoppage time, to guarantee Europe after Christmas really is an incredible outcome. We'll have a very quick look after to see how the other Danish sides are getting on. As Anyembi goes back to Naviki, chance to cross and make it four. Beck heads just wide. Probably should have nodded it back across goal, but we'll take it. 3-0. Last kick will be a corner. Luca Canel takes. Messick's up. Headed away as far as Carlson. We've got 20 seconds left on the clock. We're playing it around nicely. And Astana, I don't think, have had a shot on target all game. As Real picks the ball up to Messick, to Beck. He's got support from the striker there. Real's forced backwards, though. Probably was a good chance at a fourth, but Real goes wide to the byline. And the cross is out for a goal kick. It's a terrible delivery, but we'll forgive him for tonight. He started with the assist for the first goal. We win 3-0 against Astana. And we are guaranteed European football when February comes around after the winter break. Let's go and see how the other three sides are getting on. And then when we're next going to be back. Crucially with another win comes another 500 grand. But let's go to the Europa Conference screen. Copenhagen are through. And I think as group winners as well. That is excellent news. Bromby are in second with one game to go. They're fighting it out with the Portuguese side, but they're guaranteed at least third place. They've done really well to assure that. And Michelin's, well, that's a really tight group, actually. 
Who have they got in the final fixture? Because if it's AEK, they could yet get through. So Copenhagen face Apoel for top spot. Bromby are at Valour, so they've got the whipping boys, so should get through. And then Mitchell under at home to St Etienne, which will be tough. But regardless, good efforts from all the side. Carrillo's one of the top scorers in the competition. And two of the three other Danish sides should be in the last 32. We are really guaranteeing a boost to the coefficient. So lovely work from these guys. Great to see that the Danish sides are competing in Europe. For us though, it is Bromby in the Danish Cup quarter final. And it coincides with the Arsenal game, which now does have something riding on it. So we're going to be back for the second leg of the Cup and the last Europa League group stage game. If you did enjoy this episode and you are enjoying the series, please do add a thumbs up as always. Let me know what you thought of the performances. More disappointment in the league. Surely we're not winning a title this time round. And if you want to stay up to date with this one and the new series, then please do subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. Links to all the key playlists, including the first couple of episodes of that, are up in the eye above. There's also links to other platforms and all the ways to support the channel down in the description. But above my head now is the new series from the top level of the game. So please do give it a try. I hope you enjoy it. And I'll see you back here in a couple of days for a big game in the Europa League.